Hi, we are presenting a series of videos talking about centrifugal pumps and their electric motors. Here is the centrifugal pump and its electric motor. Centrifugal pumps are among the most used equipment in the industry. In fact, perhaps they only lose the first place for the electric motors. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Marcos. I'm a retired professor of hydraulics. Now, I'm a consultant engineer of many companies that deal with hydraulic supply to sanitation works. Here is a typical chart containing the characteristic curves of a pump. In previous videos, we've studied the head versus flow curves. Today, we'll focus on the power versus flow curves. Let's consider this particle. Its mass is m and its specific weight is gamma. We'll move it to another position, higher than it was before. The vertical distance between its final and initial position is h. If you want to do it in a place where g is the gravitational acceleration, we must perform a work equal to mgh. But mg is the weight of the particle, which is also equal to gamma v. Thus, the work will be equal to gamma vh. We define power as the work performed during a time t. But the volume divided by the time is the flow q, so the power will be equal to gamma qh. Of course, the power that we'll find using this expression will be the theoretical power. To find the real power, we must know the efficiency of the machine that will perform the work. It's a number smaller than 1. Note that it divides the theoretical power, so the real power will be greater than the theoretical power. This will be the power that we must supply to the axis of the pump. It is known as the brake horsepower, or in short, the BHP. To find its value, we must perform some laboratory tests. Observe this pump connected to an electric motor. The pump is fixed to a base. The electric motor is not. It remains attached to the system, fixed by two supports containing bearings. Thus, it could rotate freely around its axis. But it won't happen, because we have fixed an arm to its frame, which will press a dynamometer. The force measured by this equipment times the arm length gives the torque. From physics, we know that torque times angular velocity is equal to the real power. Let's run an example. Hydraulic tests of a pump generated the following data. Find the power curves corresponding to these values. First, we convert the flow units from cubic meters per hour in cubic meters per second. We do this dividing each value by 3600, which is the number of seconds in an hour. The forces measured by the dynamometer are expressed in newtons. Then we find the values of torque for each flow. For this, we multiply the forces by the distance between the dynamometer and the axis of the rotor, which is 0.50 meters. Now, to find the values of the powers, we just multiply each torque by 183. That is the value of the angular velocity expressed in radians per second. See how we made the conversion from RPM to radians per second. We know that 1 watt divided by 735 converts the power to HP. So, let's do it. We mark the graphics with the values of power that we found. There they are. Joy them by a line, and there's the curve that we're looking for. Now we do the same with the points that we found for the other impeller. We mark the graphics with the values of power that we found. There they are. Joy them by a line. And there's the curve that we're looking for. Here are the curves that we found in the pump chart. Other tests are also important to fill the chart, such as the determination of its efficiency and its required net positive suction head, in short, NPSHR. But these are topics for other videos. Oh, and if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell so you can be notified of my next videos.